So something a bit different from my usual boat building videos today. Um, I recently completed a four day water only fast. Basically I didn't eat anything for four days, just drank water. Um, on top of that I actually did a three day hike around Freycinet. So I'm currently on my way to Coles Bay on the east coast of Tasmania. Um, it's Sunday morning and I haven't eaten since Friday lunchtime. I'm actually feeling really good. Um, yesterday was a bit of a struggle. I planned on being in Coles Bay and having started the walk, but there's a huge storm off the east coast of Tasmania uh, for the whole of yesterday, so we decided to postpone it a day. Um, so I was sitting around at home, trying not to give in to all the habits and urges of a full cupboard full of nice food. Really just an experiment to see how I'd go with not necessarily a high intensity workout but but with a prolonged and fairly intent you know energy intensive workout. The only other time I've done a four day fast, I basically just locked myself away for four days and played computer games to try and minimize any temptations um, to eat anything. And basically what I found with that was that I I just became lethargic. Um, I don't think sitting around for four days is really good for anyone at, at any point. So at this time I wanted to get some movement going, but do it in a way, you know, that was getting out, taking myself away from those distractions and doing something, you know, doing something fun. So we're here. We're going to walk around the point. Hazard's Beach, Cross Hazard's Point. Hazard's Beach to Cook's Beach. Stay the night there, then head over the mountain, possibly detour to Mount Freycinet, down to One Glass Beach campground, and then Tuesday morning walk out over the saddle back to the car park. We're about half an hour to an hour into the walk. I haven't eaten for over 48 hours. I'm actually feeling fine. No drama at all, no no energy loss or energy deficiency of any kind. I mean, I'd, I'd like to eat, because I like eating, but that's really about it. And the weather is substantially better than we thought it would be. So, all in all, having a glamour. So just to give you a bit of background, I've been playing around with low carbon ketogenic diets and fasting probably for about five years now. Um, so I consider myself to be fairly fat adapted. So generally speaking, I don't do a strictly low carb or ketogenic diet anymore. Um, basically because it's just too hard to maintain. So what I've found is that fasting has a very similar effect and it's just a lot easier to do. You can, you can allocate that time. Um, you can do it whenever you, you know, whenever it's convenient, when you haven't got other things on and you can do your two day fast or your four day fast or even just a morning or a day and start getting all the benefits. So a couple of hours in and it's a beautiful day. No dramas, not feeling particularly hungry or lacking in any energy. So we're stuck really. And we're just heading, we've got to head over to Cook's Beach, which is over there, and set up camp for the night. Over the mountains, you can see there, so that'll be the tough part tomorrow. So, yeah, going well. So, my main motivation for it is my overall health um, and weight control. And it's funny because people often say to me, Oh, well, what do you mean, weight control? You, you, you're not overweight. And I say, Well, yeah, that's because I fast and I've been, you know, adapting my body for years. Um, I have just as much ability to put on weight as anyone else. Uh, and I just find that fasting is a really easy way to, to control that without being too strict on my diet. Um, I'm a shift worker, so you know I have to deal with being tired and and the cravings, the carb cravings that seem to come with that. Um, and you know, like basically, I just give myself if I'm at work, then it's a cheat day. Simple as that. And you know, I'm at work for thirty three percent of my waking hours, so. You know, that's a lot of cheat days. So fasting is a good way to, to manage that for me. 
basically what I did was I had my last meal on the Friday lunchtime. Originally we were going to start walking on Saturday sort of midday or early afternoon but we ended up getting a big storm come through on the Saturday which was basically just a short sharp and dirty crazy storm um, so we postponed it till the Sunday so finished eating on Friday lunchtime had the whole of Saturday fasting started walking about two o'clock on the Sunday the first day was um, around 12 kilometers and it took us about three and a half hours um, which was pretty quick like it was a pretty easy going walk um, but we did feel it by the end of it both of us having not walked with packs much in the last sort of year or so um, energy wise didn't have any problems at all in fact I felt really good all right so we made it to Cook's Beach um, to about a I think it's about a four and a half hour walk for us which wasn't too bad um, beautiful day and no issues with the fasting yet uh, obviously I'd love to eat something right now but um, I actually don't feel hungry at all and I have no lack of energy or any real side effects that I can um, really note so other than just you know it would be nice to eat something so that's good uh, we're going to set our camp ground up here right on the beach can get much better than that the biggest thing that we both noticed actually was dinner is actually like a really enjoyable part of any day but especially when you're hiking you know you get to the campground you set up your your tent and you you know start cooking some food and it's a bit of a sort of social wind down kind of thing which felt really odd not doing it just coming into camp setting up and then kind of like what do you what do you do now so it's day number three of the fast and number two of the walk and it's a bit more miserable today than it was yesterday it's quite windy and cold and it's been quite a few rain showers but we should be fine no dramas um, Still not feeling particularly hungry or uh, lacking in any energy, which is good. So, all going well. The next day was a big day. Uh, it was expected to be about six to seven hours over a fairly decent sized mountain, which I knew was going to be tough. And this is where I knew it was going to get interesting in terms of the fasting because, you know, you're, the idea with fasting is to keep your heart rate down. As soon as your heart rate gets above sort of 130, 140, 150, depending on your fitness level and things like that, um, you really start to burn those carbs in your muscles. All that gluco, all that glycogen that's been stored in there really starts to burn away very quickly. Um, and climbing up a mountain, it's very difficult to keep your heart rate really down, well, so especially when you're carrying you know, a 15 kilo pack. So we're uh, on our way up Mount Graham, it's pretty tough going on our weary legs, struggling to keep my heart rate down but it shouldn't be too much of this so it should be fine, just the, the old legs, haven't done much pack walking in the last year or so, so I'm starting to feel it. So we're at the junction to Mount Freycinet which we've, after resting our legs for a while, decided to have a crack at. And then to get to over to Wine Glass and camp, we've got to go up over that mountain there. It added about three or four hundred meters to our incline for the day and an extra hour walking. This is definitely the toughest part so far, but we may be getting close. There's Mount Graham, and there's Wine Glass where we're staying tonight.
Long last bye. So we just reached the Wineglass Bay campground. Um, the walk over Mount Graham uh, and the little side trip up Mount Freysenay were a lot tougher than both of us thought they'd be. It looked like the big storm on Saturday had washed a lot of the trails out, so it's pretty much just bare rock and a lot of water, so like tra traipsing through. Um, wasn't really muddy because it's all, all rock and um, gravel but just a lot of water and really bumpy and rough. Um, at one point I thought I might need to eat some carbs to keep my legs going up some of the hills. Had a, a pretty bad case of jelly legs going on. Um, but I had a bit of a rest and came right really and just took it easy up the hills. So I'm sure the, the lack of carbs is probably having an effect as my glycogen stores and my muscles start to run out um, and I didn't manage to keep my heart rate down as low as I'd like. It was just impossible through some of the steeper, rougher sections. But feeling pretty good now actually and on the way down um, didn't have any dramas at all. I actually decided to have some bone broth just to just to get some um, protein really because I was really worried about my body starting to strip protein out of my muscles to start making that glycogen and replenish those gly glycogen stores that I'd used during the day. Um, so that basically meant it was three days and about five or six hours of water only fasting. Then I had yeah a cup of bone broth which is really there's not much to it. Certainly wouldn't be anywhere near enough to break me out of ketosis or or have a significant impact on the fast. The next day was um, a fairly short hour and a half walk um, along the beach and then up over the saddle so not much to it really it was still you know muscles were still feeling a bit fatigued from the previous two days but you know energy wise felt fine no dramas lunch on that that day on the Tuesday which was like a bone brothy stew kind of thing um, conclusions I was really happy with how I went energy wise like I said no no issues at all I felt really good going up over the mountain I think the lack of carbs had an impact next time I did it I think I'd just try and avoid that kind of intensity the purpose of the exercise really was to try and keep my heart rate low and have a con consistent, you know, low level exercise. The next week or so was quite interesting. So at, at the same time as doing this fast, I decided to do a really basic parasite cleanse um, just to see if there was any, you know, horrible parasites in my gut and try and potentially get rid of them. So I started taking what was actually a candida support thing um, which has got a few different things oregano oil black walnut and capillic acid it also had a small amount of um, olive leaf extract cat's claw whatever that is wormwood which is supposed to be really good for getting rid of parasites um, magnesium blah, blah blah so I ended up taking th sort of three to five of those per day for the next sort of week and that definitely uh, had an effect so I did notice what seemed to be um, parasitic eggs um, coming out and after probably the fifth or sixth day I noticed what looked like from what I've googled online some sort of worm um, bodies coming out so that definitely had an effect whether it was the fasting or the pills I don't know, I, was, I suspect it was a combination. Um, and I felt great. Like the next sort of two weeks, I felt really, really good. Um, the only negative side effect that I noticed was my strength had noticeably decreased. It's been about two and a half weeks since I got back, and 
I feel like my strength has actually returned. Um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say whether it's back to normal or not because I haven't actually been to the gym uh, in those two and a half weeks. So when I've been to the gym and and get a feel for it, I'll write a little update in the in the comments. From the research that I've done, once you refeed, most of the studies suggest that that muscle is actually um, regained. So yeah, that was my experience fasting um, and hiking at the same time. Stay tuned for the next update of the prior building, which should be coming soon. Alright.